Hello and welcome to this presentation. I'm Hannah Heredia, registered dietitian from out in sunny and very hot Arizona. For Malnutrition Awareness Week, I'm presenting a poster I did with my colleague and board certified nutrition support pharmacist, Courtney Wood, on the topic of providing parental nutrition for a severely malnourished patient. Just a tiny bit of background. From a referral that was sent to a home infusion provider, Using the nutrition screening process, a patient was found at risk for malnutrition. And as we know, the nutrition screening process is a vital tool that all clinicians can use to help identify patients at risk for malnutrition. And if the patient is unable to consume food by mouth or via an enteral route, then parental nutrition can be a viable option to provide this adequate nutrition. The referral that came over identified this patient as being 19 years old. She had a diagnosis of mitochondrial disease and cyclic vomiting, as well as intractable nausea vomiting and also abdominal pain. The referral was sent to the home infusion provider for andanzatron therapy. The initial nutrition screening performed on the initial review by the nursing department observed that the patient had a significant loss of 24 pounds in six months. Of note, it is important to share that any clinician can complete a nutrition screening. When nursing observed the weight loss and also saw the low body weight of 66 pounds, then the home infusion dietitian was alerted. So after further review, the weight loss was significant, about 26.7% in six months, and that 66 pound body weight was around 67% of the patient's ideal weight range. The patient's oral intake averaged one meal per day for the last three months. The initial referring physician was the pain specialist who had ordered the ondansetron therapy. This office was then contacted due to the patient's severely malnourished state. So once the patient was identified as at risk, it was then sent to the dietitian to review, and then the provider was alerted regarding the patient's malnourished state. So with this being an outpatient setting, more investigation was needed to contact the right provider to be able to provide the patient with nutrition support. From the conversation with the pain specialist, the patient's PCP was able to be identified. And upon further discussion with the PCP, several challenges presented to being able to provide the patient with help. The first being an insurance issue to complete an endoscopy to determine the cause of the patient's abdominal pain. In addition, a feeding tube would not be able to be placed due to the patient's out-of-pocket cost, the patient did not want to have a feeding tube placed, and the patient did not currently have a gastroenterologist following her. On discussion with the PCP, the PCP had seen parental nutrition provided in the past for other patients, but did not have experience with ordering the therapy in an outpatient setting. The PCP was also unaware that parental nutrition could be provided without a hospitalization, it did not know the steps to getting an intravenous line placed. Upon learning these challenges, the home infusion dietitian educated and explained the patient's current risk of malnutrition, including, as we know, multi-system organ failure and death, and provided resources for the PCP for central line placement. The PCP was also in agreement to get a gastroenterologist on board and a consult was pending to determine the underlying issues related to the cyclical vomiting and abdominal pain. So as we know, it really does take a team to make a plan work. So once the patient was on service with the home infusion provider, an antiemetic was started and the vomiting did improve. Due to the patient being severely underweight, malnourished, and with recent significant weight loss, the patient was very at risk for refeeding syndrome, so conservative parental nutrition formula was started. The patient was slowly advanced to goal and started gaining, an, on average, about two pounds per week. So some very key takeaways. Malnutrition remains to be a significant issue in both inpatient and also outpatient settings, and nutrition support knowledge remains to be varied among healthcare professionals. Awareness is essential for these providers, especially given complex gastrointestinal conditions. 
Providing educational resources and coordinating nutrition therapy, the Home Nutrition Support Team is vital for providing outpatient nutrition support and educating outpatient physicians as well. Nutrition screening protocols remain in place and can help identify the patients at risk for malnutrition. This is a mandatory requirement for the ACHC, and this can be completed by any clinician, not just the dietitian. Continuing collaboration between the home nutrition support team and care providers is vital for optimizing all patient outcomes, preventing and reducing hospital admissions, as well as having smoother transition of care. Again, collaboration as a team and putting a plan in place for each patient you have who is at risk for malnutrition, whether they need nutrition support or not, is so vital for the care of the patient. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. 